our Facebook Live um, sessions. Um, this week we're going to be covering um, step four and that's making some long term changes to do with stress. Um, I'll finish up this series next week. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And um, just let's get into it. It's quite long this morning. I just want to just say that to people. This might be a little bit long for you. So as always, take what you like, leave the rest. Um, I will be focusing on thinking and behavior in terms of long-term changes. So let's get into it. Let's see what we're doing. So the first one, the first blog, first video I did was all about, you know, getting to know your stress symptoms, what your triggers are, and that's step one and step two. Um, the second video was all about um, step three, which was making small actionable steps to take back control immediately, take back control. But with everything, it's it's about one step at a time. So only taking one of the things I recommended, making that change, and then thinking about, you know, once that's cemented, making um, a second change if you need it. And today it's about longer term changes. And the best way to do that one, there's lots of tips um, on blogs that I've already done about making lots of other changes you can make. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry for having my throat this morning. Um, but the, the longer the longer term changes really is centers around how we think, our negative thinking and behavior, certain behaviors. I'm gonna pick out one particular behavior that's common to um people with stress. So, you know, I said that there's a number of changes that you can make. There's plenty of blogs, so head over to the website. If you put in the word stress, you're going to find um you know lots of tips that you can change that you can make more changes with if you've you know if you're already doing anything i've already suggested at the at the moment so do head over and have a look at that um but stress as i said really does affect the way we're thinking and it's it's not a good thing because it sets up a negative cycle that we get into so effectively what happens is you have we all have negative thinking um and we enter into this cycle um we're also stressed we add that to the mix we add it in and basically the stress affects your negative thinking the negative thinking affects the stress and it enters into a cycle it makes the stress worse it keeps it going for longer and you know negative thinking can do that with a number of things depression and anxiety are two that, that as well that i would pick out to highlight about negative thinking so understanding how we actually think and starting to notice our patterns and learn the patterns and learn to challenge and put the thoughts on trial effectively um, and then that will actually help reduce down the stress as much as any of the other strategies that we can talk about in terms of stress so what kind of you know patterns might you see underlying negative or cognitive distortions traps that keep us in this negative cycle um something you can do here is to expand that brain dump i talked about and write down your thoughts and your feelings so that when you notice when you you can you can start writing them down and then when we're writing them down and if you can see them in front of you it's a lot better um than you know just trying to keep it all up here so even if you're using an online journal highlight them you know if you can get a highlight or highlight them and this is a particular this one's coming up over and over again as you read back through them and start to see those patterns see if there's a pattern there um we call these these patterns cognitive distortions that's the fancy word they use for to call them basically it's just patterns of thinking that's what they're talking about here they're thought traps that keep us trapped in whatever cycle it is we're in so in this case we're talking about stress they're really going to dictate how we think and how we behave and we want to catch them because we want as i said put them on trial recognize them we do it in reflection at first using the brain dump and then we go back and once we get better and better and better at doing it in the brain dump itself, when we write them down, we write everything down, we are able to then move it on to 
um, you know, recognizing them in real time and stopping them in your head in real time and challenging them in your head. But if you don't recognize them, if you aren't aware that they're in the first place, if you aren't writing them down and noticing those patterns, then you're not going to be able to get to point. And you will get to a point where you will be able to do it in real time and stop them and ease down, take the break off the acceleration of the words in terms of your stress. Um, so what types, as I said, what types are there? There's quite a few. Um, and with stress, we tend to have quite a few of them. We don't just, nobody sticks to just one type. Um, you know, you might hear people saying, oh, I'm a perfectionist. Um, oh, I could catastrophize a lot. Um, but you'll find that, you know, you also have other ones. So all or nothing thinking, that's one, one type. We see things in black and white terms over generalization um you know we, we pick out a single negative event as proof that all other similar events are going to turn out the same um we have mental filters um again you pick out a single negative detail and dwell on that detail and then the whole situation becomes negative as a result um disqualifying the positive so in other words we 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 only see we kind of put blinkers on with this one and we reject any of the positive experiences that we might be having um jumping to conclusions is one where we're making a negative interpretation even though there are no definite facts that support the conclusion we're making in other words mind reading or fortune telling so if we're trying to predict the future or we're trying to mind read other people that you know what they're doing um, and why they're reacting we're mind reading there um other ones you might see is magnification that's catastrophizing exaggerating the importance of things usually it's usually in a negative manner we're not, we don't tend to you know um we don't tend to catastrophize things in a positive way um so we blow things out of proportion um emotional reasoning um assuming the negative emotions that we're feeling um although i've said this before there's no emo negative emotions we tend to uh, put a negative connotation on them it's how we respond with those emotions uh, is is what makes them negative so but in this case negative emotions um reflect the way things really are um and not necessarily true um should or must statements this is particularly one for perfectionists um, you know, we set the high standards. We should be doing things. They have to be done a certain way. The really standards are so high that we can never meet them. And they're, and they're, they're unrealistic um, standards with this one. Um, Labelling and mislabeling here. This is um, a, an extreme form of overgeneralization. Um, this is where, you know, we, we put a leg negative label on something. And it's usually ourselves. Um, or we mislabel something personalizing it personalization is all about you know if something external happened it's your fault it's always my fault you know it's always my fault that's that's basically what that is um so i've gone into much more detail and i've given examples over in the blog so have a look at that if you really want them you can you know keep an keep an eye on them and have a look and see okay which ones am i doing pick out the ones you think you're doing use your brain dump and then start to notice them write down any thoughts or feelings that are coming up and see do they relate which ones do they relate to in that because you can just imagine how this kind of thinking is going to affect you if you're if you're using any one of those even um you know you can really see how if you get stuck in that pattern how it can really warp our thinking and then fuel the stress to make it even worse than it than it actually is and then that has a knock-on effect to our self-confidence our self-esteem our physical responses because we're going to have physiological responses not just behavior um, but inside us you know you've had the butterflies in the tummy um, tension in the shoulders you get headaches all those physical stress symptoms that I talked about and then of course our behaviors as well on top of that um, and then you know it, it's fueling the cycle so we're not going to just end up stressed we're going to end up with all that fear of loss or failure poor concentration excessive worry loss of sleep feeling unsupported all those symptoms that we talked about at the start you can see how the negative thinking is going to fuel those 
and um, particularly when we're caught in one of those th thought patterns it's a trap it keeps us trapped in 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 a negative cycle um so have do have a look at if you haven't watched part one of the videos go back and have a look at them and go back and have a look at um you know the the part one vi uh, blog as well and look at in connection with your thinking what is that what symptoms are being fueled there by that kind of thinking so you know as i said at the start we have to challenge the thinking we have to put it on trial so that means we need to be able to take a step back and in order to do that at the beginning we really need to um use the a brain dump is the easiest way to do it we go to bed it's a great way of getting everything out of your head just before you go to bed dump everything out onto a piece of paper into a diary and just get it all out and part of that would be not just your shopping list and your to-do list and you know appointments and emails you forgot to send but any thought that's dominating you any event that's dominating you still when you get to bedtime write it all down and notice it and then go back in reflection and read back over what you've thought the next day um you've written down the next day and you know ask a number of questions now i'm not going to go into them because this this video would go on forever and ever if i start going into every detail um but there's a number of questions in the blog that you can ask yourself to basically put the, these thoughts that you notice on trial to get the evidence for and against um, to do it because to change your thinking we need to recognize that we need to recognize the pattern and we re really need to recognize you know that it's automatic that we're automatically thinking these things we're slipping into it and we put them on we need to put them on trial we need to notice them and recognize them um, because they're a tape they're basically this tape that's going on somebody has triggered in our head and um you know it can get very stuck if we don't challenge it if we don't start to take it out and destroy it basically and that's what we're doing by putting it on trial we're we're questioning it and we're saying look let's put this thing on trial let's destroy it and overwrite it but it takes a little bit of patience perseverance but as I said, in um, in time um, and using, as I suggested in, in the blog, was to use some affirmations. Um, and I've given you some um, examples of those in the blog as well. That you rewrite this. You help to rewrite this uh, negative thinking and shift, shift your own thinking and your own perspective. Shift your behaviours take the accelerator off the brake in terms of you know your stress um by doing this and in real time with practice by writing it down by going back reflecting over it pulling them out challenging them you do get better at it because your brain you're rewriting how your brain thinks you're telling your brain by doing that exercise with brain dumping and challenging you're do you're telling your brain to rewrite them you're telling your brain they, they're not right so when they come up your brain gets the message oh that's not right and you start to automatically do it but that does take some repetition and some practice but during doing that brain dump in your journal is definitely one way to very quickly do it if you feel particularly stuck um what i would suggest you do is you really do need to um, reach out to somebody like me um the other thing i say in in the blog is that you know we need some compassion and gratitude in there um because if we're going to do change our thinking we need to be you know yes aware of it but we can't skip the acceptance part and self-acceptance is going to be a cornerstone for your compassion it's going to help you make better choices and take proactive uh, steps in the long run because once we become aware of something, we can be, um, you know, very quick to jump into action and not always the best thing to do, particularly if you're trying to change habits and lifestyle and change your thinking. We need to slow it down and say, OK, this is how I'm thinking right now. Let's challenge it. Let's have but let's also have compassion for myself. How would I treat a friend if they were thinking like that? It's sit and listen. I'd sit and listen and I'd, I'd, you know, I'd have compassion for them. 
Um, so think about, you know, slowing it down and having some compassion where you're saying, okay, I'm doing the best I can right now. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I have listed and I've done a video all on, you know, self-acceptance um, and compassion before. So do have a look at them. As I said, if I went into everything in this morning, it would just be crazy long, long training. Um, the other thing I said I talk about this morning and about long term changes is behavior and the behavior. I mean, we all have a lot of behaviors that we do um, when we're stressed perfectionism you know you can think of perfectionism in particular and um, when we're stressed um it will drive an awful lot of stress in somebody so you know you can have behaviors associated with perfectionism but the one behavior i wanted to pull out and i pulled it out in the blog was avoidance um because it is a behavioral strategy that we do use when we're stressed and um, we do try to avoid the people and the situations that are stressful so we're not facing up to them in other words we're not challenging them um you know and the thinking won't go away um it only makes it worse you're not going to be able to think yourself out of this situation you've got to find ways to deal with the behavior the avoidance um when you're stressed because that would make a lot more sense yes you can go and tackle the behavior but that takes time um but you need a plan of action to deal with stressful people, to deal with stressful situations. Um, so, you know, if you find certain people and situations are making you stressed, then, you know, that plan of action is going to be much more productive. Next week, I do talk about the people part of it. Um, but right now we need to talk about, you know, meeting our basic self-care needs. I've talked about that um, in, the in the second video where I talked about making those small changes. This is going to help you tackle um, the stress. They're part of the plan. That's part of the plan. Um, but you also have to have, um, you know, questions that you can use to help you formulate a plan to deal with future stressful events. So I put up a five step formulation a plan question that you can use so the first thing is to actually you know notice what's the stressful event what is it um you know what what is making me stressed about this situation what is it in particular um and then looking at okay what will happen if i face this stress if i face this situation head on what's going to happen challenge the negative thinking um you know but look at what's the worst case scenario what's your fear here and then from that, look at, you know, what steps can you take that will actually help this? Because if you're avoiding it and not dealing with it, <clears throat> it's not going to change. So what steps can I actually do here that's going to help me face this worst case scenario that I keep thinking about? Um, how can I be better prepared? Can I ask for help? Can I delete some tasks from my to do list? To free up time to deal with this situation can i delegate some things to somebody else using your relaxation skills your basic self-care etc is going to also help so try and break down the actual event that's causing you the stress that's the worst case scenario that could be associated with this and see at each stage what can you do to actually tackle each stage of it if it happened or if it happens again and then put your plan into action and yes that means facing the fear and doing it anyway um, but if we don't face the fear if we, you know we can prepare in advance and that does help alleviate the anxiety and the stress and then you know challenge it take the necessary steps ask for help delegate delete Use your relaxation techniques, use your basic self-care techniques, use any stress reducing techniques that you you have decided to take on um, and then have, you know. Your your um, your plan of action for each step, if it was something in work, um, if you have to prepare for a meeting and it really stresses you out because you have to give a final report. 
For somebody else that might be, nah, that's a breeze. But for you, that could be causing you an awful lot of stress. So what can you do there to be prepared in advance? Because most of the time, it's the preparation. We avoid it. We procrastinate. We catastrophize about it. Remember all those negative thinking we were talking about? Go back and have a look at what would make it easier for you to stand up and give that presentation in the room. Um, so ask for support. Could you have somebody that supports you? You know they're on your side in the room with you. Um, you know, be there for you. Um, or be there up until you go into the room. Think about it. Think about each stage of what's going to happen. Um, preparing the report and then giving the report. What can you do at each stage to ask for support, help, um, use techniques to relax yourself, reduce that stress? Can you delete your can you delete or delegate to somebody else some some other work so that you can be uh, spend more time getting prepared? And then do the do it. Do your action. Do your action plan. Put your action plan in place. But you have to review then what happened afterwards because it's great to plan and we can be, yes, it worked. I was really, you know, that that went much well, great, better than I expected or that. But sometimes we come out and if our negative thinking isn't that, um, isn't that good and if we're caught up in that, you know, oh, it was terrible and we personalise it or we focus in on one particular part of it and that made the whole thing, we're not thinking straight. We're not thinking straight, so therefore, if you can get positive feedback from other people, that's going to help you with that challenge and that part of the negative, your negative thinking, and to actually see that your plan actually worked, that it did work, but your thinking was getting in the way, maybe, you know. So what what part of it worked? What part of your plan worked? What didn't? Um, what can you learn from the plan? Maybe it didn't go so well. So what can I do differently next time? Um, was there any one thing in particular I could have done well or I, I did do well? Learn. It wasn't a failure. You did it. You need to learn from it. And, you know, it is about, re, re um, you know, again, reframing our thinking about, you know, our sense of failure and that. Don't forget to celebrate. Pat yourself on the back. And if you know, doesn't matter which way it went, you need to pat yourself on the back and say, Yes, I got there, I did it, and have a celebration. Um I do have a method in I know I'm getting on with the time here and I'm sorry, but I do have a method in there that might help you um with um you know formulating a, a plan um with uh number three, which was um you know, what steps can you take that's going to help you here if the worst case scenario hit? So n there is what we call the stop method. It's a very simple method is you take each letter of the word stop, S-T-O-P, and you put it in. It makes helps you put it into action. So stop is actually literally stop what you're doing because generally it'll be some sort of negative thinking or, you know, you're becoming overwhelmed and more stressed. So stop and take a breath. We go back to our breathing. Um, three minute breather is really good for this. And then observe what's really going on. What is going on here for me? I'm overthinking this. I'm getting really stressed out. How can I, you know, engage my senses to kind of pull, pull myself back into the room and what's going on in the present moment in time? And I do give you an exercise to help you with that one. It's the five, four, three, two, one, um, game that you can play with yourself. Um, to engage your senses really observe what's going on so we're on number three observe what's going on keep it simple what can I do to bring it back that's going to keep this simple for me keep it get me back on on track so maybe that's you know to do a brain dump number four is p proceed proactively and it's proceed proactively um so what can I do here this is me making a formulating a plan here what can i do that's actually going to reduce my stress get me back on track get me that plan in place so complete the brain dump maybe it's just a simple case of picking the next thing off the brain dump of my to-do list and how i can get it done and get me back on track can i ask for help can i delete something can i delegate something 
Um, do I need to just get up for and go out for a 10 minute walk to kind of reduce down my stress hormones and then come back and look at what I have to do next? Um, do I need to go look after my basic needs? So in that case, you would use the HALT acronym. Am I hungry, angry, anxious or angry, you know, uh, lonely or tired? What do, have I met my basic needs, in other words? Um, so think about using the st that stop method to help you. It's all in the blog. So, you know, as is um, the 54321 exercise for to on the go stress relief um, and that engages your senses, but brings you back and grounds you in the present moment. Um, it's very simple. They're all in the blog. So there's quite a number of steps in there that can help with your negative thinking, with your behavior, um, getting a plan of action into place in terms of, um, you know, formulating a plan, putting a plan together using the stop method and the halt method and engaging your senses. It's all in there. Have a look at it. Um, much more detail than I can actually go into here. And even in the blog, I'm really only tipping on things. Um, but I have put links to other blogs like the compassion and the gratitude in there that you can have a look at and take your time. The whole idea about this, if you're trying to break stress up, is to take your time and make one small change at a time. And when you do that, you will achieve long term changes. Um, so have a think about it. Have a stop. Actually stop and have a think about it. Um, what way am I thinking? What way am I behaving? How is that all tied into my symptoms, my stress, my physiological responses to stress? Stop and think and then make a small action plan to take one small step and move yourself a little bit forward at a time rather than trying to do a big leap. Um, so I'll leave it there. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Um, as always, I'm happy to answer questions if people have any questions. Um, if you're over in my mum's group, then they also get to private message me and things like that. So that might be a way for you to go. Um, I But I'll leave it there. Have a good week. Have a safe week. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you all for the final part of the series. Next week, we're going to talk about dealing with people. And we're going to talk about uh, clearing the decks, which will be a really good plan of action to do if you want to um reduce down your stress and thank you all to those who watch live thank you all to those who watch on facebook and on youtube we're in replay and i will talk to you all next week